Hello everyone, I'm back again with another topic, Caesarean Scar Pregnancy Spectrum of Cases. Now what is the etiology of uh, CSP, that is the Caesarean Scar Pregnancy? Pregnancy in the scar from a Caesarean delivery is located outside the uterine cavity and is completely surrounded by myometrium and fibrous tissue of the scar in the prior low uterine segment. Invasion of the conceptus into the myometrium is believed to occur through a microscopic defect or a dehiscence in the scar secondary to poor vascularization of the LUS with fibrosis and incomplete healing. Now there are four diagnostic criteria proposed by Gordon et al which are most widely accepted. One is obviously an empty uterine cavity without contact with the sac. Second is a clearly visible empty cervical canal without contact with the sac. Then the presence of the sac in the anterior uterine isthmus. An absence of or thinning or a defect in the myometrial tissue between the bladder and the sac. And most of the cases have myometrial thickness of less than 5 mm. So here we can see uh, the sac in the scar, previous scar region empty ut uh, uterine cavity or endometrial cavity and empty cervical canal and there is thinning of the anterior myometrium. So early PVS is the gold standard for diagnosis. Combined use of ultrasound indicators like the relationship between the gestational sac and the cesarean scar, the source of trophoblastic blood flow around the sac, the thickness of the residual myometrium and about the size of the CSP mass. All these are very important and together improve the differential diagnosis between the CSP and the other pregnancies which are implanted in the lower uterus. Some people advocate the combined endovaginal and transabdominal ultrasonography to obtain a panoramic view of the uterus. Now, the Doppler findings also we have to uh, know that there is high velocity and low impedance surrounding the pregnancy or the sac and on pulse Doppler examination with the default settings the flow waveforms of high velocity that is peak velocity more than 20 per centimeters per second and low impedance that is PI less than 1 have been reported. Studies have also shown that in patients of CSP with bleeding they have larger gestational age and lesion size thinner uterine scar thickness and richer peritrophoblastic perfusion. So here we can see this is a grade 2 CSP, a grading I will be dealing with later on. This is the grade 2 CSP and we can see extensive peritrophoblastic flow and in, in the GS also. Then this is grade 1 CSP and here also we can see a peritrophoblastic anterior myometrial flow. Risk factors for CSP Obviously, multiple prior cesarean deliveries, previous DNC, previous abnormal placentation, previous uterine surgeries like myomectomy, metroplasty, hysteroscopy, etc. and previous manual removal of placenta. Now, grading of CSP. So, in uh, reporting uh, the cases of CSP, we have to give grading. So, there are four grades. Grade 1 is when the GS is embedded in less than half thickness of the lower anterior corpus. Grade 2 when it is extending to more than half thickness of the overlying myometrium. Grade 3 when the GS is bulging out of the caesarean scar and grade 4 when the CSP is um, amorphous tumor with rich vascularity at the caesarean scar. So this is the grade 1 okay, occupying less than half of the anterior corpus and the image of the same. And this is more than half of the anterior corpus and image of the same. Again, this is grade 1, this is grade 2 and again this is grade 1 according to the thickness of the anterior myometrium involved. Then grade 3 when it is bulging out of this part, here we can see it is bulging and the myometrium is so thin and this is the bladder. And grade 4 is like an amorphous tumor. Here also we can see it is like an amorphous tumor. This is the MR image of the same. Again we can see this is grade 2. This is also grade 2. See how thinned out the anterior myometrium is. And this is the reason for myometrial rupture if not diagnosed uh, timely. 
and this is grade 3 we almost absent anterior myometrium and the sac is bulging out of the cesarean scar this is the 3d representation the empty endometrial cavity empty cervical canal and g sac in the region of the scar and this is the anterior trophoblastic flow Again, we can see sometimes we get a, a complete uh, trophoblastic flow and usually we get anterior peritrophoblastic flow. So, uh, here also we can see the anterior myometrial flow and flow in the fetus as well. Same here, we can see the anterior trophoblastic flow which is very important here. Again, this is grade 2. Here we can sometimes find the uh, uh, endometrial cavity which is empty but it is filled with slight fluid collection we can find here. And the, definitely the sac here is bulging and uh, more occupying more than the uh, half of the anterior corpus with thinning of the anterior myometrium and even more thinning as we follow it up. This is a short video showing the uh, grade 1 CSP and also showing a negative sliding sign. What is a sliding sign? On gentle probe pressure, there is non-displacement of the sac in case of CSP and also in cases of cervical ectopics. So this is negative sliding sign, non-displacement of the sac with gentle probe pressure. Similarly, here also, the negative sliding sign we can see, with probe pressure we are not able to displace it, which is helpful in differentiating with the failed pregnancies, which I will show later on. So the differential diagnosis is very important. We have to have a very high uh, suspicion index to diagnose CSP because often we misdiagnose them as cervical ectopic or failed pregnancies. So the points are the GS in the CSP is seen in the anterior lower uterine segment whereas in the cervical ectopic and failed pregnancy we find them within the cervical canal. The overlying myometrium is thinned out in CSP and normal in cervical ectopic and failed pregnancy. Then again, the sliding organ sign is negative in CSP and cervical ectopic as well and it is positive in failed pregnancy. Then on the Doppler examination, we have a marked peritrophoblastic flow in CSP with high velocity and low PI values on pulse Doppler. And in cervical ectopic, we have a slight vascular flow around the, just like any other ectopic, within the GS and around the GS. And in the failed pregnancy, definitely we don't have any color flow. And on short follow-up, the size of the CSP in cervical ectopic will, will grow. And in failed pregnancy, it will not grow and it will be uh, not fixed in the location. This is the cervical ectopic. We can see it is in the midline. Uh, perfectly normal anterior myometrium and an R glass appearance of the uterus and the flow around the cervical ectopic. So very important is differentiating the CSPs from spontaneous or inevitable abortions. So spontaneous or inevitable abortions begin with more extensive bleeding right from the beginning from the detached chorionic sac and most aborting patients complain of cramping pain in the lower abdomen and exhibit sometimes cervical motion tenderness. In contrast to the CSPs where we have mild or moderate lower abdominal pain and not so much extensive bleeding initially. Then Zerkovich et al. reiterated the importance of the absence of healthy myometrium between the bladder and the G-sac and added following criteria. That on Doppler imaging, the sac is well perfused in contrast to the avascular appearance of the aborting G-sac and the negative sliding organ sign that I have already mentioned. So here in this case, this is the CSP with peritrophoblastic flow and then we are going to have negative sliding sign as well. And no flow in this inevitable uh, missed abortion and we'll have a sliding sign positive and internal loss may be open at times. And we can also see that it is very low lying, not in the region of the uh, scar or isthmus. Then complications are devastating. There can be placenta previa, accreta, spectrum and studies have shown that if you follow up the CSPs, they are going to land up in the placenta accreta spectrum in most of the cases. Then if you are going to follow uh, 
we can have a uterine or myometrial rupture because of thinning out and then leading to massive hemorrhage and hemorrhagic shock which increases the maternal morbidity and mortality. So finally the take home message is early detection by TBS is the gold standard for management of CSPs for location of sac, for abnormal placentation, allowing more treatment options and reducing the risk of complications. CSP should be sought after in women with prior history of LSCS and low implanted gestational sacs and CSPs are associated with increased risk of PAS that is placenta accreta spectrum and maternal morbidity.